friends welcome back to all on law in this video i'm going to talk about approach to a diagnosis of thrombocytopenia thrombocytopenia right so low plaquettes how to approach is really very important so in examination if you find thrombocytopenia the first thing try to look for the blood smear okay two things can happen with the blood smear either it can be a normal okay or it can be abnormal right so let's talk if it's normal then look for coagulation studies coagulation studies like PT PT PTT right again two things can happen with the coagulation study either it can be a normal or it can be abnormal if it's a normal remember if it's abnormal then think of only one disease that is a DIC disseminated intravascular coagulation right it's a really very important very dangerous very fatal disease if the coagulation studies are normal then the possibilities could be the ITP that is immune thrombocytopenic purpura earlier it was called as the idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura now it's known as immune thrombocytopenic purpura then we have N A I T P that is neonatal autoimmune thrombocytopenic purpura okay right and even think of drugs so these are the possible causes for this a thrombocytopenia with the normal blood smear with normal coagulation studies right now let's talk about the the most important and the major part is if the thrombocytopenia is there and there is abnormal blood smear abnormal blood smear okay then what you have to look for is look for platelet clumping platelet clumping okay the platelet clumping, clumping right so if there's a platelet clumping is present then it's a pseudo thrombocytopenia pseudo thrombocytopenia right let me write ptp okay right if there's a platelet clumping is there if there's a no platelet clumping no absent then what you have to do is look for hemolysis look for hemolysis if hemolysis is present it can be two things it can be present and it can be absent right okay so if it's present hemolysis is present okay then look for two uh, schistocytes We'll talk about the what you call absence of hemolysis if no hemolysis then we'll talk later in the next screen okay now we are going with the hemolysis if it's present if it's present then look for schistocytes if they are either they can be present or absent right if the schistocytes are present okay if they are present let me draw over here okay if they are present then look for T coagulation studies coagulation studies if coagulation studies are either it can be abnormal or anormal so if it's abnormal remember it's again the DIC so DIC has very what you call a variable presentation right and if it's a normal the coagulation studies are normal either it can be 
what you call thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura TTP or it can be HUS that is a hemolytic uremic syndrome okay guys right now let's move on to the if the schistocytes what you call schistocytes are present right we, we, we said if it's a coagulation study is we have to do the coagulation studies either it can be abnormal or normal if schistocytes are absent okay if there are no schistocytes are present no schistocytes then what you have to do is look for some other signs like spirocytes and uh, what you call ham test and Coombs test right so if you look for that and the spirocytes are present and Coombs test is positive sp spirocytes and Coombs test is positive then think of event syndrome event syndrome okay and if ham test is positive then think of PNH right paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria if ham's test is positive right guys so now let's move on to the uh, hemolysis is present hemolysis is present right we, we finish with the hemolysis is present now hemolysis is absent now if hemolysis is absent and there is an what you call abnormal WBC count look for the WBC count if it's abnormal WBC count abnormal WBC count and do the what you call um, bone marrow biopsy bone marrow biopsy okay um, either two things can be there is a hypoplastic or cellular hypo plastic or cellular right or cellular okay right hypoplastic if the bone marrow biopsy shows hypoplastic then think of only one anemia that is a plastic anemia plastic anemia okay and if it's cellular then either it can be what you call the leukemias, the marrow infiltration, the, the megaloblastic anemia, the storage disorders, okay, the melodysplastic uh, dysplastic syndromes, okay. And if it's a normal, then it can be PNH, drugs, hypersplasm, infection, right. So try to look for these. If it's near normal, if, if it's a really very abnormal, then you can think of these, what you call uh, differential diagnosis. So remember, cellular, leukemia, marrow infiltration storage disorder megaloblastic anemia then we have MDS this is a melodysplastic syndrome ok guys so thank you so much for watching this video uh, thank you so much for watching and please do subscribe to our channel take care